People tell me I'm the dumbest piece of idiotic shit to ever walk the earth. You know, I almost want to vote for Sarah Palin in 2012 just to see this country decline even further. Oh my god! You empty-headed, moronic, stupid fucking cunt! What is wrong with you? My god! What? Do you like logic? Well, that's good, because we slapped it on a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> Babble, balderdash, baloney, bullshit, bunk, drivel, foolery, foolishness, gibberish, hogwash, hooey, jive, malarkey, rubbish. Do not swear. Yeah. <laughs> what the cunt is that fuck? I, I'm gonna swear all the fucking cunt I want. <laughs> Sucks. Be entertaining, Weber. What do I do? What do I do? Fascinate me with your fascination of fascinationiness. I like the fact that I haven't matured. Yeah, it's not always a good idea for everybody. Some of us are crazy fucking masochists. The angry, misogynistic, internet loner guy. Hate! So I've been called a misogynist and a sexist and a pig. Oh, fucking faggots! They won't let us fuck, you know, our, uh, Swiss cheese. Nonsense! Bullshit! Lies! Deceits! Hokum! Bullshit. Meaningless platitudes. Language police! Woo! Woo! Language police here! We're here to control what you say! The feminazi cunts. Rub balloons on my nipples or sh I don't have a lot of friends. That clips package could have gone on for fucking days. Now, this is the one we've all been waiting for, isn't it? Yes. Let's fucking do this thing. Hello there, hello there, hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 11 of The Descent of Man, O Sphere. The series in which we take a look at the ways in which the Manosphere are trying to reverse human evolution and drag us all back into the fucking sea. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the godless banana botherer himself. Yes, I'm talking about the amazing atheist, whose real name is TJ Kirk, and I'm obviously not doxing him there, it's incredibly well known that's his name. He's even published books, somehow, under that name. So don't come up with no nonsense, otherwise I'll karate chop your dick off. Now this is a bit of a weird one for me to make, because I actually used to be a fan of The Amazing Atheist a long time ago now, but I was. And I also tend to agree with a lot of his stated political opinions. He's actually quite progressive in a number of areas, but the problem with TJ is basically everything else. Don't worry, banana man's here! Now, some of you might be wondering what he's doing in this series, because you might be thinking to yourself, well, he's not of the Manosphere. But you know what? It's fine to be wrong about stuff. And on this occasion, you most assuredly are. TJ Kirk is an MRA by any realistic measure. He spouts all the fucking stereotypical bullshit MRA talking points. But male genital mutilation? That's still standard operating procedure throughout much of the US. I don't see society really, like, wringing its hands in concern over these poor men with prostate cancer, even though they're dying at nearly the same rate as these poor women from breast cancer. And you say, well, some people say, why not just call yourself a humanist? And you say, because humanist already means something else. All right, why not call yourself a gender egalitarian then? Men are not treated anywhere near fairly when it comes to child custody, when it comes to who has to make child support payments when it comes to reproductive rights. The same cannot be said of my opponents when it comes to denying the challenges faced by men, the sexist threats posed to men. Do you want an example? I can give you a billion. The imaginary wage gap that domestic violence against men. When Rebecca Watson, feminist mega cunt extraordinaire, I consider myself an anti-feminist, but if we're talking about China or India or somewhere like that, then I would fully support a woman's suffrage movement with the aims of giving women equal social and political footing with men. If you're a woman in trouble, help is on the way. If you're a man in trouble, trouble's where you'll stay. And let's not forget that it's only men who have to sign up for the selective services in the United States. We can be drafted. 
What fucking army would be desperate enough to draft TJ, really? Like, the fucking guys at the Alamo wouldn't draft you, you fucking useless cunt. So yeah, he spouts all the fucking same typical MRA rhetoric, and I think he's made about roughly a billion fucking videos about false rape allegations now as well. And most damningly of all, he was booked to talk and appear at the A Voice for Men conference a couple of years ago. Now, ultimately, he didn't actually appear at the thing, and the reasons for that remain unclear. But, the fact that he was asked to go there, and the fact that he agreed to it, speaks volumes as to TJ's supposed non-MRA status. Basically, he's a fucking lying sack of shit. Which you may have noticed is a theme with TJ if you've followed him over the years. Now TJ's sign-off catchphrase, which he has thankfully eased off using in recent times, has always annoyed me, and it's this. I'm the Amazing Atheist. Peace the fuck out. I'm the Amazing Atheist. Peace the fuck out. I'm the Amazing Atheist. Peace the fuck out. Peace the fuck out. And the reason it annoys me is because of his use of the word fuck. Now before anyone screams hypocrisy at me, I know I swear like a fucking ducker. But, whereas I'm a genuinely foul-mouthed bastard, it always seems to me that TJ is just really affecting that fucking nonsense. He's just adding it to sound really cool. Because essentially, he still has the mindset of a fucking child. It's really, really, really pathetic. Now TJ's fanboys are some of the worst pricks on the internet. They really are. And it really doesn't matter what I say about them at this point because they will have already been frantically thumbing this video down for TJ, their lord and saviour. Because apparently, somehow, supporting this idiotic blowhard is good for atheism. Oh yeah, but they're all completely individuals, yeah. Now TJ is a man of contradictions. By which I mean, he couldn't hold a fucking consistent position on anything if his life depended on it. Other than being an ignorant prick. Because he's been absolutely steadfast in his commitment to that, it seems. But in everything else, he's been basically all over the fucking place. Like the fact that he supposedly hates corporations. Oh yeah, he's forever going on about how he hates the corporations. But earns his living on YouTube. And then there's all this shit. Rosa motherfucking clips, yo! Rosa motherfucking clips, yo! Chocolate chip pancakes. They got those IHOP. You ever been to fucking IHOP? If you've never been to IHOP, go to IHOP. Uh, find out where the nearest IHOP is to you, and if it's even like if it's like, if it's like four or five states away, just go. Today's show is brought to you by Audible.com. If hey guys, before we talk about the Republicans, I wanted to talk to you really quickly about a new strategy game called Game of War Fire Age. If you like games like Clash of Clans or Age of Empires, then I think you'll enjoy Game of War Fire Age. <sighs> this is Coke Zero, by the fucking way. Coke Zero. Yes, it seems that TJ is more than happy to suckle on the corporate teat because he's essentially a hypocritical douchebag. And I didn't actually plan on starting the video with talking about his love for corporate money whilst, you know, in theory being against it. But the reasons why I did will become apparent in a moment because now it's time for... <laughs> Yes, it's the inevitable bit about rape. <sighs> now, when it came to deciding what to put into TJ's inevitable bit about rape section, there was so much to fucking choose from. I could have gone with the time he made up stories about having been raped as a kid, or I could have gone with the time he said he wished that a rape victim would drown in a rapist's cum. Or indeed the time he went to a rape survivor's chat room to argue the semantics of their use of the word survivor. Or of course there was the time that he said that as a 23 year old he had had sex with a 14 year old but later said that it was a joke. Which either A shows he's a fucking pedophile or B what an appallingly despicable sense of humour he has. And if the answer is B, that means, essentially, he's made a false rape allegation against himself. Which is ironic, given the fact that TJ, of late, makes videos about false rape allegations about as regularly as the average person takes a shit. Seriously, if you go make yourself a cup of tea now, The Amazing Atheist will have released another video about false rape accusations by the time you get back. But instead of all that, I'm going to take a look at a couple of his more recent videos on the topic.
One of the places they like to hang out is a site called Rational Wiki, which is where I got it, uh, this pretty good definition of rape culture. Um, this is the definition of rape culture from Rational Wiki. Rape culture refers to the ways in which a society and its culture trivializes, rationalizes, and even condones this vicious act of violence despite being nominally against rape in abstract. Yeah, that's an okay definition, really. Certainly one we can work with, right? He then goes into his reasons why he thinks rape culture doesn't exist. And it's just bog-standard MRA dipshittery, and I don't think we really need to concern ourselves too much with it. But at the end of that video, he throws down the gauntlet. So basically, feminists who disagree with me on this, put up or shut up. There is no rape culture. Prove me wrong. Challenge very much accepted. But the thing is, TJ, I'm not going to prove you wrong. I'm going to let you prove you wrong. And not just that, I'm going to do it using only one of your videos. But not just that, the video to which I refer is going to be a follow-up to the video in which you initially issued your challenge. Now this is where the bullshit I was explaining earlier about TJ's love for corporate money comes into play. Because what some of you may not know is that TJ has sold the rights to some of his videos to a corporation. And they use it to sell advertisements and blah blah blah, right? And the end result of that is that it can be quite difficult to get response videos to TJ stuff past uh, YouTube's copyright filter, as was the case with the video we we're going to have a look at in a moment. Now I explain this for two main reasons. One is to expose TJ's money-grabbing double standard antics, and two is to explain the fact that the way I've gotten around this particular problem is by pointing my camera at my TV screen and filming it as the video is playing. And that seems to work most of the time in terms of getting stuff past copyright issues in case you're having those sort of issues yourself, okay? But ultimately it means the sound's a bit crappy and you're going to have to put up with the edge of the TV screen in shot as well and uh, the reflection of the light bulb, the light from the light bulb behind me, right? But if you don't like it, you know, tough shit. This is very common among human beings, this whole sexual abuse thing. I mean, in our culture, it seems pretty prevalent. So you think sexual assault is quite prevalent in our culture? Because that seems to go against what you were just saying a moment ago. Hmm. If you're a high school football player, you can get away with rape. <laughs> if you're an NFL football player, you can get away with rape. Football players can get away with some fucking rape. So you're saying that rape is just accepted for a large part of the American population? Hmm, what would we call that kind of culture? I'm baffled, TJ. Oh, sorry, I've interrupted you. Please continue. You know that because of Steubenville, which is right here in Ohio, my home state. My, my self-chosen home state. This is not the state I was born in. This is a state I choose to live in. And there's a town that, that's somewhere around me that, that uh, some girl got raped and the town was basically like, eh, football star. He's a football star. You can't fucking persecute or, or prosecute either one, a football star. He can catch a fucking ball. He can throw a fucking ball. He can run across some grass. He's an impressive man. He, he has talents. So of course he can rape some girls. What are you talking about? Oh really? That is interesting, isn't it, TJ? Because that seems to me like a society trivialising, rationalising and condoning rape. But what would we call such a culture? The situation is fucked. That's reality. When, when the police and, and the entire justice system that we have designed to bring justice to victims cannot prosecute rape victims, uh, or a, cannot prosecute rapists when it's obvious that they're guilty, when their guilt is self-confessed in numerous places to numerous people and uh, actually captured on tape. So it's not just wider society which is accepting of rape, but even the police and justice systems are seemingly unmoved by the plights of rape victims. Hmm. Maryville... I don't think anything's come of that yet. Another girl raped by football players who filmed it, who bragged about it, who thought it was just great. Remember those two girls that we, we fucking tricked into drinking uh, more alcohol than they could handle, and then we fucking raped them. 
and they were happy they were proud like yeah i accomplished something and and the, and but one of them has a one of them is a football player and he has a dad a politician for a daddy so it's okay it's fine don't you see how it's fine so that would be another example this time of gang rape where there was a fucking ton of evidence against the perpetrators and yet nothing was done to serve justice Surely that would be a sign of that thing that you said definitely didn't exist. Uh, what was it called again? Um, uh, was it tape culture? Uh, grape culture? Snape culture? Was it cape culture? I can't remember. I can't remember! If you're in prison, rape is acceptable. Actually, America fucking revels in the rape that goes on in prison. I hope that motherfucker rots forever. And, um... <laughs> and, then, and then they fucking talk about, like, oh, well, we hope that he fucking drops the soap in the shower, and we hope he gets sodomized, and we hope his cellmate is like Big Bubba with a fucking 14-inch dick and drills him in the ass every night. And just so rape is just seen as just another fucking uh, form of punishment. Like, America is reprehensibly self-congratulatory about that. So there's a widespread opinion in society that not only condones, but openly celebrates rape. If you're in the military, rape is acceptable. Rapes that happen in the military are ignored, and they are covered up. And uh, an estimated 26,000 service members were sexually assaulted in 2012. 2012. For those of you who don't like 2012. Um, according to the latest government report, that is um, rampant. That's rampant sexual assault in the military, in the armed forces. I mean, do I even have to be sarcastic at this point? That is rape culture, TJ. That is literally a culture of rape being totally fucking ignored. That's rape culture. All of these things have been very clear examples of rape culture, you fucking dumbass. But why does rape become so prevalent in these situations? Well, TJ, it's because of a thing. You may have heard of it. It's called rape culture. Because I'll tell you, even when, like, when I was doing the research for Steubenville and Maryville, I fucking discovered that I knew people who had been in that situation, who had been raped by football players, and then the whole thing was just covered up. So if this happened in these two towns, and it came to light only because the guys filmed it and bragged about it, and I know for a fact that it happened... In my hometown, where I grew up as a kid, then it's probably happened all the fuck over the place. So you're aware of a widespread nationwide drive to cover up rapes that happen regularly? Hmm, well how would we describe such a thing? The ways in which a society and its culture trivializes, rationalizes, and even condones this vicious act of violence despite being nominally against rape in abstract. And what would we call such a thing? That's right, TJ. Well done. Now, it would be remiss of me, having jokingly alluded to it a few times, not to mention the amazing atheist sex tapes. In 2011, a tape was leaked onto the internet of a totally naked TJ. Yeah, imagine that. Fucking hell. Anyway, right. Pouring hot coffee onto his chest before proceeding to insert a banana, or as Americans wrongly pronounce it, banana, into his anus. Yummy! And then a second tape was leaked, uh, which saw TJ take a rather more dangerous turn. Again, he is totally naked and pours scalding hot cooking oil straight from a cooking pot onto his genitals. His tiny, tiny genitals. Now, I'm not going to put any of that footage in my video because it's just... Ugh. But below, I've linked the Encyclopedia Dramatica page for The Amazing Atheist, and you can go and check those videos out if you really must. 
And if you do watch those videos, you'll see quite clearly that all of TJ's bravado and pretend fuck you attitude are merely his way of overcompensating for his diminutive downstairs endowment. Seriously, there's more meat in a cheese sandwich than there is swinging around between TJ's legs. Now what was so great about those videos coming to light is because TJ's a bullying prick and essentially he got his fucking comeuppance. So yeah, TJ's a bully and a heartless douchebag and his bullying heartless douchebaggery came to the fore when he made a breathtakingly appalling video about this story from 2012. On October 10th, a 15-year-old Canadian teenager named Amanda Todd committed suicide because of the non-stop harassment inflicted upon her due to revealing photos of her circulated on the internet. Is her tale a parable about bullying? If so, what makes her stand out so much more than every other kid who has wound up killing themselves due to being bullied? And then he goes through a number of different stories of teens who committed suicide and pretends he gives a fuck about them, but he's actually just using them as a rhetorical device because he seemingly doesn't understand how the media fucking works, okay? That they can only focus on so many stories. And not just that, but how the human brain works and the fact that people have only got time to take in so much fucking information. Not just that, but that one story can act as a catalyst, kind of embodying the much larger problem because it's much more difficult to see the massive, massive picture of a thing where as focusing on one story you can actually uh, focus attention in on that topic but tj seems either not to know about that or not to care about that because you know he's either an idiot or a prick and i think he's probably both all in all and we need to teach kids how to deal with bullies themselves because bullying doesn't stop when you get out of school the adult world is also full of bullies yeah people like you tj you bullying prick I posted this image to my Tumblr a few days ago. It's a picture of myself, looking rather angry, holding a sign reading, I am the other hundreds of thousands of people who died today other than Amanda fucking Todd. Oh my god. The fact that you thought that was a cool thing to send out there, TJ, says more about you than I ever could, or anyone ever could. You fucking heartless piece of shit. This image has raised the ire of folks like P.Z. Myers, who labeled me a sociopath because of it. Which is precisely what you are. I mean, I don't always agree with P.Z. Myers on everything, but on this one he smashed the nail on the head, hasn't he, really? I wish I were a sociopath so I could join the likes of the pseudo-moralists in hoisting Amanda Todd over those who also died on October 10th from things like starvation, war, lack of clean drinking water, preventable diseases, and other such things. It and tell me, TJ, what the fuck are you doing to help any of those people either? Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing. So this video basically boils down to you being annoyed that some people are focusing on one topic, whereas actually you think it's better to help nobody involved in any fucking topic whatsoever. And to snipe on the sidelines like a little prick. What was it you were saying a moment ago about pseudo-moralists? that about 25,000 people die every day of hunger or hunger-related causes, according to the United Nations. When is the last time you heard the name of a person who died of hunger? And what are you doing to help those people, TJ? Fuck all. Absolutely nothing. I mean, you're eating more than your fair share of food, I know that much. I pass no judgment on Amanda Todd. No, 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 TJ. It's Amanda fucking Todd. If we're going to have it right, yeah? That you're making no judgement on the woman. Let's have it right. Amanda fucking Todd. Yeah, there's no judgement here at all. You're a piece of shit. Now, TJ is a self-confessed anti-feminist. And as such, has made a super mega fuckton of anti-feminist videos. So I've decided to take a look at one with the widest scope, you know, one that deals with a lot of different issues, so that we can see the amazing atheist at his most deliciously stupid. There's a blog post that's making its rounds on the internet called 33 Reasons to Be a Feminist, and I'm going to refute every single goddamn one of them. Number two, because women don't get to decide over their own bodies. And then underneath it says 77% uh, of anti-abortion leaders are men, 100% of them will never be pregnant. Now this one, uh, 
If this is a valid complaint. Of course, this is a valid complaint, in my opinion. I am pro-choice. I believe that a woman does have the right to choose. I think she does have dominion over her own body. I don't think that uh, just because... I mean, and, and, and really, it's irresponsible at this point to have a baby that you don't want. I mean, it, it's, it's really just the greater evil to bring unwanted children into this world. Even if you do have some ethical dilemma about uh, a fetus being terminated, surely it's better than the alternative at this point. Even though I agree with this being a problem, I don't see how feminism is the solution. But you're aware, surely, TJ, of things called social movements and how they fucking work, right? Say, take feminism, for instance, right? Feminists will go out there and campaign for political change via, you know, change to laws and legislation and stuff, but also to social attitudes in order to try and make a positive impact on the fucking issues in hand. And feminism has been pretty fucking successful when it comes to female reproductive rights. As you're well aware, because I've heard you fucking piss and moan about it in various of your other videos when it comes to the disparity between female rights and male rights, because, you know, you're totally not an MRA. Three, because women are constantly sexualized and objectified while men get credit for their skills and professions. We know that these magazines are using sex appeal to get people to buy it, but so what? What is wrong with sex? Why is sex appeal a bad thing? Why is it bad for a woman to be sexy? Why There's nothing wrong with females being sexually attractive to males or females being sexy. There's nothing wrong with being sexy, you facetious little prick. It's that in popular culture, certain parts of it anyway, women are seen purely for their worth as sexually attractive beings and nothing else. And that men are not treated in that same fucking way, which is the main fucking point of that entry in the list, which you have singularly refused to fucking answer. Number six is because 97% of rapists never have to spend a day in jail. Well, listen, rape is a very difficult crime to prosecute. Yes, but TJ, what about if there were a social movement out there, right, which was going to put pressure on politicians for improved laws, as well as putting pressure on law enforcement agencies to enforce laws that are already there, and basically, you know, do their fucking jobs? Yeah. Oh yeah, we do have such a movement. It's called feminism. Bruh. Every time I'm in the street, I hear bruh, 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 bruh. Men don't. Bruh. Number nine, because women still make less money for doing the same job as men. My problem with this argument is that it almost universally fails to take any other factors into account. Well, linked below, TJ, there is a study which does take into account lots of other different shit and compares like with like, apples with apples, and finds that women are earning less for doing the same jobs across the board in various fucking industries. So, surprise, surprise, good old Teej was talking shit. Number 11, because there are actually people who think it's not rape if the person is sleeping. Yeah, that's what we call evil, okay? Plain and simple. And once again, feminism's not going to stop evil. Yes, TJ, but you must realise that it's possible for people to change. I mean, not you, obviously. You would never do anything as pathetic as, you know, uh, trying to learn something or develop as an adult. But it is possible for others to do so. So feminism goes out there and raises awareness around issues of consent in order to make the world maybe a little bit better. You know, Teej, something you seem fucking allergic to, it seems. 12, because one out of every six American women has been the victim of an attempted or completed rape in her lifetime. Obviously, that's a, a sobering statistic, and I don't think that it's quite true, but it is close to true. The, the sexual assault numbers in this country are crazy. Feminism just is ill-equipped to deal with a problem of this magnitude. Well, at least feminists are trying to do something about the issue, rather than you sat there in your nice fucking cosy little world, bitching about stuff on the fucking sidelines, whilst having absolutely no fucking real world idea about what the fuck to do about these issues. It seems to be quite a theme with you, TJ. You fucking piss and moan about fucking everything, all the bastard time, but the second anyone tries to get up and actually do something about those issues, all of a sudden you sit there and smugly shit all over their efforts, whilst contributing absolutely nothing positive yourself, you fucking stupid lazy cunt.
number 18, because a woman is raped every 14 seconds in South Africa. Well, is it the same woman every time? <laughs> well, is it the same woman every time? <laughs> well, is it the same woman every time? <laughs> is it the same woman every time? <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking comic genius, isn't he? And you want to be taken fucking seriously on this issue? Go fuck yourself. 20. Because victims of rape are too often distrusted, 54% of sexual assaults are not reported to the police. Once again, I would say, is this an example of rape victims being distrusted, or is this just an example of innocent until proven guilty? Don't hide behind that fucking bullshit line. You see what I meant earlier about him definitely being a fucking MRA? It's such a smug, pathetic MRA fucking move to pull. You must know that all across the Western world, police forces have had a really shitty record when it comes to enforcing laws regarding rape. To the point where a lot of women, and I would argue probably most women, have no fucking faith or confidence in the police forces where they live to deal with things like rape. Because they know that not only will they not get justice, they won't probably even get fucking decency from their police services. So yeah, it's about the disgusting treatment of rape victims, you duplicitous asshole. Number 22, because this page has 1,768 too many likes. And the name of the page is, This is Why Indian Girls Are Raped. Given that there are hundreds of millions of people on the internet, I don't think that 1,700 perverts is anything you need to worry about, okay? That is the mansplainiest response to anything ever. I mean, literally ever, ever, ever in the history of mankind. Ever. Number 23, because approximately 3 million girls are victims of female genital mutilation every year. Well, that's obviously bad. Well, that's obviously bad. Because approximately 3 million girls are victims of female genital mutilation every year. Well, that's obviously bad, but it's not happening in the Western world. So fucking what exactly? Seriously, so what? You fucking douchebag. Number 24, because there are approximately 2 million victims of sex trafficking each year, 85% of the victims are women. And who cares about the other 15%? Just a bunch of fucking Y chromosome having, fucking penis having pieces of shit. Forget about them, just concentrate on the 85% that are women because they are the only ones who deserve our empathy. Um, you know what, the, the reason 85% of the victims are women is because there are far more uh, heterosexual men who are in need of sex slaves than heterosexual women or gay men who are in need of sex slaves. It's just true, okay? I mean, uh, because any woman can have any man pretty much at any time. Whereas... A lot of men cannot have any woman, no matter how hard they try. Uh, those men are going to want to have uh, a sex slave that has no choice but to have sex with them. So, sex trafficking is fine then? Is that what you're, the point you're fucking making here, Teej? Because even though you go on to say you're against sex trafficking, the thing you said before that, you know, the thing we all just fucking heard you say, seemed to suggest otherwise. Number 26, because this is a real commercial for American Apparel. Oh, God! <laughs> Why? Why? What? 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 So? So? What's the big fucking deal? See, TJ, this is what we talked about earlier, okay? They're sexualizing women in the way that they're not sexualizing men. Now, I know your fucking brain power is vastly diminished from that of, you know, an average fucking human being, but do try and keep up. Number 28, because this is a fact, and then uh, behind it it says, Want to hear something really scary? In 31 states, if a woman has a child as a result of rape, her rapist can sue for custody and visitation rights. Yeah, but you know what? That is an oversight, alright? 
it, there's there's it, there's not some lawmaker out there who fucking wrote a law that said you know if you're a rapist you have this right. This is just an oversight. In- but you see, teach. feminists in each of those states can work within those states to correct that oversight and to close that loophole. Next. Ah. Most of the feminists reading this are not in China. If you are in China, feel free to be a feminist. In fact, if you're in any of these countries where the injustices described in some of these uh, these reasons to be a feminist, if you are in those countries that are afflicted or you are willing to go to those countries being afflicted, then I say be a feminist and fight for those things. Uh, but if you're here in America and all you really plan to do about it is bitch on your blog, then I don't see how you're being particularly helpful or productive. You realise that you've basically just called yourself out there, TJ? Because that's all you fucking do is sit there and piss and moan on the fucking internet. I mean, it's what you do for a fucking living, for Christ's sake. Do you have any amount of self-awareness, look, like, at all? At even the slightest fucking scintilla of any of it? Really, at all, TJ? Number 33. Because three men in Sweden walked free after raping a girl with a glass bottle until she started to bleed. Wow, you ran out of stuff, I guess. Be a feminist because uh, three men in Sweden walked free after raping a girl with a glass bottle until she started to bleed. Yeah, this one thing happened this one time, therefore adopt uh, this whole new way of looking at the world. But TJ, I ask you, cast your mind back a few minutes, right, to the 97% of rapists who go unpunished for their evil crimes, okay? So this Swedish case is not a one-off. It seems pretty fucking typical of the experience of your average rape victim in the fucking justice system, it seems, doesn't it? But that's the thing, TJ. I think you already fucking knew that. And you're just pandering to MRA assholes in order to keep the Patreon money fucking flowing in. You utterly fucking despicable prick. Bruh. Every time I'm in the street, I hear bruh, 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 bruh. Bruh. So let's wrap this shit up, shall we? The thing that actually really annoys me about TJ is that whilst we agree on loads of stuff, there's a lot of political crossover between our types of thinking there, and of course we're both atheists and stuff, it's the misogyny and the kind of, to a lesser extent I suppose, the aggressive way in which he deals with um, religious people, even relatively moderate religious people, but it's mainly the fucking misogyny and the bullying and shit like that, right? Because I think essentially... His attitude towards women was developed um, at about the age of 10, and then he stopped emotionally developing completely. And that just leaves us with this fucking pathetic loser, basically. So the only thing left to say here, really, is the amazing atheist, TJ Kirk, Tej, go fuck yourself. Don't take money, don't take fame.